Hello, Jim from Nomad Raceways here. Our Grand Prix track was the first to make use of Omni slot box technology. Let's take a look at how that helps make it my favorite slot car track. Grand Prix is a 65 foot Carrera Digital 124 scale track. The addition of Omni slot box gives it unique capabilities. The original prototype Omni slot box was built directly into Grand Prix's table. It has been tested and proven to be reliable after hundreds of hours of racing and driving almost daily for the past five years. Now Omni slot box is available as a component that can convert any Carrera digital system to full function Carrera digital or high amperage analog. This Omni slot box has been connected to two of our optional power supplies. They are each 10 amps and adjustable from 0 to 18 volts. If you have a single or a pair of comparable power supplies, you can use them. Uh, we have connected a commercial style controller. Really, you can use any analog controller with Omni slot box. Uh, we have a XLR connector for the controller but can supply adapters so that you can continue to use alligator clip, banana plug, or even the old uh, RCA audio jacks if you, if you prefer. Uh, Omni slot box does come with its own modified Carrera uh, CU unit that connects directly to our system. To put it in analog mode, simply throw the switch. You get a green light that confirms that we're running analog and switching it to digital gets you the red light and the system is ready to go. Installing Omni slot box is simple. Plug in the 12 volt power supply that we include and like all our connections when it's right it'll give you a green light. Next plug in your power supply. Uh, if you have a single power supply leave the jumpers in place and when you plug in your power supply, now you can use banana plugs, you can use alligator clips, you can wire directly behind the nuts, but any way you connect it, if you leave the jumpers in place, you have powered up both lanes. At this point, you can connect your uh, modified Carrera CU. There's a five pin connector that goes right here. Five pin connector, lock it down. Notice we're using industrial grade, heavy duty, stainless connectors. Everything is robust on, on the slot box. This is not a toy. Now at this point, uh, you could run. Uh, throw the switch for digital. Power taps are powered uh, to the lanes and your digital system is ready to go. Uh, for analog, uh, you'll notice that these are not lit and that's because we have not run any extra power taps. Now you could run under analog like this. You'll be powering the track from the uh, Carrera connecting section but if you're going to be running a high powered motor or you have a large track then uh, you'll want to um, uh, add additional power taps. The power taps would simply uh, plug in. Uh, we recommend you use uh, a different color for each of your rails so that uh, you can be sure to connect them correctly to the track. Mm -hmm. So we like to use black, red, green, and white and those will correspond black, red, green, and white to your rails. Uh, at the, uh, of course, these power taps would normally run to a um, uh, a bus bar and then from that bus bar you would send out additional uh, power taps to different locations uh, on your track uh, typically about 10 feet apart or so uh, at each one of those sections uh, you could just with your 14 gauge wire I like to peel the insulation back about three inches give it a, a, a twist and then you can insert that business right into the holes that are in your Carrera track and that will give you uh, a long uh, trouble-free 
connection to, to that rail. You could even follow that up with a little hot glue if you want to make sure it stays put, but it's, it's pretty firm as it is. So that's how your power taps would connect to your, your track, and you can do that in as many locations as you like, connect them all to one uh, um, bus bar. Uh, the only other thing here is if you have two power supplies, as we do, um, just disconnect our jumpers. You'll notice now the light is out for uh, lane two, and if you connect your second power supply to lane two, you now have independent voltage control on your on your two lanes. So you can reset the voltage uh, to either equal things out or uh, slow down the kid that can't drive. Whatever you need to do, you have independent lane control. That's it. It's ready to go. Digital. Analog. All right. With OmniSlot Box installed, we're able to connect six controllers for Carrera Digital and two analog driver stations for analog controllers all at the same time on the same track. Uh, on Grand Prix, we still like TrackMate for our analog timing um, and Slot Race for our, excuse me, Smart Race for uh, digital timing. My understanding is a new version of Smart Race can also do analog timing, so you may be able to run one timing system. We haven't tried that yet, and we do like TrackMate. With Omni Slot Box, you can run every one of these cars. They all have different motors, different configurations. You can enjoy the full variety that the slot car hobby has to offer and run pretty much anything you already own. All these cars have different motors and provide a different driving experience, respectively. Let's take a closer look. There's the boxer motor as used in the Carrera 124, the S cans as used in most 132 cars, that little motor used in 143, whatever that is, S can sidewinder, of course, in the Pioneer, uh, the slimline F motor in Skelectric uh, Formula cars, the long can uh, motors as used in NSR and slotted and similar. Uh, same similar long can motors are used in the big heavy uh, 124 scale auto cars. They draw a lot of amperage when in a in a big heavy car. There's a BRM 124 with a long can motor. FCR with 16D. I think this one has a super 16D in it. Commercial chassis JK car with a uh, uh, Falcon 7, uh, a Hawk 25, and a 132 chassis. The direct drive uh, JK car, very interesting car. Retro car with a Euro motor. Womp with a 16D. Wing car with a Fal uh, excuse me, a Phoenix motor in it. Uh, another wing car with a uh, X12 motor. AFX HO, uh, vintage uh, 16D. 132nd, a vintage Tyco uh, 706, a Strombecker Destroyer, a Pittman 85, big padlock motor, mm -hmm. a uh, seven pole inline Pittman motor, Mobuchi 16D, 26D, 36D, a 36D that's Rambucci, uh, much tuned up uh, uh, 36D motor, a Group 27 car, and a vintage Group 7 open motor car. Some of these cars, like these at the end, will draw as much as 6 or 7 amps all by themselves, and that compares with just about a half amp for cars at this end of the, of the list. Here's why I think you may want an Omni slot box. Now, here's a uh, Pioneer Legends car, no magnets. It's very common. Uh, Club car, and of course, it'll run nicely on our digital car. 69.739. No problem. And it took the last time. 6.761. 6.195. There we go. 
A 6195, that's a good lap time for a no magnet. It's electric or Legend or Carrera car with no magnets. Uh, but if you had commercial 124 scale cars with a 16B motor, let's see how that is on the track with sl slot box. <laughs> Four one eight four. That's uh, two seconds a lap quicker. Also, no magnets. So um, you might enjoy that. Sixteen D wams on a Carrera digital track. Sure. Fun cars to drive on this track. Wing cars on a Carrera track. Yes, you can. Here's a Phoenix wing car. 62.316. 3.56. 4.5. 3.455. Another second to lap quicker, and it's great fun. AFX HO car on Carrera Digital 124 scale track. Is on the slot box? Sure. 5.006. 5.006. 5.006. I think they work better on this than the track they were made for. We believe that if you have invested in a nice slot car track, you should be able to run any kind of slot car on it and benefit from the full range of experiences that, and the variety that's available in the slot car hobby. Also, if you have invested in commercial slot cars, you should be able to run them at home or on a club track like this.